<laughs> hey guys, I'm Tyler. And I'm Luke. And welcome to another episode of Holy Heck, I Really Like Love Live. <laughs> Our Love Live podcast where we go in depth and discuss every single Love Live song <laughs> from the beginning till now. This week, we are going to be talking about Kuwariyasuki and Shadowgate to Love. <laughs> oh yeah, and EJ's here. Hey, hey EJ. Hey, EJ. Hey. And we, ha and we have 500 subs. Hey. hey. Oh, and it was Savivo's birthday. Happy birthday, hey, Savivo. Happy birthday, Savivo. Oh man, what a, what a goddamn announcement. What a ceremony. Is. Joyous yeah. occasion today. Um, yeah. If anyone was here for Savivo's birthday present, where we got Australian flexing man yeah, to, uh, active Raj. to yeah to dab for an extra five dollars, we'll have you know that that intro also cost us an extra five dollars for being too goddamn long. Mm -hmm. Wait, sticks? Yeah, I know. No, uh, Australian? It was not sticks. Oh, okay. We well, wish it was. I was sticks like, man, sticks is charging five dollars. <laughs> I thought he would do that for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, can we get all right, sticks? Uh, get yourself in front of a green screen. To do the poem. Do it now. <laughs> I uh, touch the cow, do it now. Touch the cow, do it now. At this point, we'd say something like episode 63 of Holy Heck, uh, or He's something along those us, lines. Though. But yeah, it's, it is already done. We have oh, nothing efficient. to do. I know, yeah, right? Our hero, dude. Mike, Mike's my boy now. The last time we asked you guys, we even say it. You, you have to watch the video. <laughs> no, we we asked you guys what your favorite pizza topping is, and we got one coming in from I Love Snickers 155. Favorite pizza topping? Just curious uh, as to, you know, there's some kind of question on how this, uh, or some kind of story on how this question came to be. No, we were curious. Yeah, uh, we just want to know. I'm a very plain person, so I tend to have just plain pizza. Though sometimes I will add ham and peppers. I used to have plain pizza until, I th it must have been when I was like nine and I went to a birthday party and there was no plain pizza left. I was like, oh, this is, this is pepperoni. Um, <laughs> and then you discovered that flavor is good. Flavor is good. A big fan. I mean, I add like crushed red pepper to pretty much like every pizza anyway, so like it always yeah, has some kind of kick. Eat. Yep, I wish. No, I have, a, I have a hard time like seeing like pizza place ass like crushed red pepper and then adding it to a non pizza place food. I'm like, this feels wrong. <laughs> this feels dirty. Yeah. All right, we got one here from Psycho Every Day. Uh, small Psy tidbit Ocho before. Psycho Every Day. Still Whatever. making this mistake. In the uh, here. <laughs> Luke called Innocent Bird aesthetic. Gonna force him to listen to lo-fi music until he likes it. Respect that. Uh, he says, I am a carnivore. 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 Uh, give me pepperoni, Italian sausage, and bacon. The best way to die is by eating a deep dish pizza. Pizza from BJ's with these three toppings covering the entire pizza. It's the good stuff. I respect that. I like, you know, I, you get those Pizza Hut or like Domino's or like Papa John. Not Papa John. We're boycotting them. Uh, like deep dishes, they're obviously the poor man's deep dishes, but they're still pretty damn good, and I respect it. I get heartburn every time, though. I respect I'm it too. I mean, I I was in Chicago for a time, so you know I got me some love for the ooh, deep dish. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, EJ, EJ, EJ. While we're on the subject, what's what, what's your answer to this question? Okay, so I mean, I don't know how it works wherever you guys are, but in my parts, we uh, usually find deals which are just like only two toppings. It's so like large two toppings or medium two toppings mm -hmm. or whatever. And so I usually just get the two because, you know, I'm not about the life. I'm not spending that guac for just one extra topping, right? But those Coward. two toppings, I know, right? <laughs> but I usually go like my, my top three are probably chicken, pineapple, um, and then onions plus anything because I just love onions. I love onions um, too. Onions are super good, yeah. Or also jalapenos plus something. And the something is a meat. I usually like to get like one meat and one non meat. On there, yeah. yeah, yeah. How good are fried eggs on, on pizza? You're asking the wrong man. I've never never tried it. Fried eggs All on right. burgers are my favorite. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah, let, that's me, good stuff. let me tell you guys a cautionary tale for exactly one second. Do not, no matter how appetizing <laughs> it looks, do not get the cheeseburger pizza. Look, listen, man, I love burgers. I, I, I like hamburger, uh, but holy shit. You will, you are making a goddamn mistake. Right. Do not do it. I, I, I promise. I will hold strong for the cheeseburger. And the pizza. worst part is, I still make the same mistake. I'm like, man, it was awful <laughs> last time. Maybe it won't be so bad this time. And then I get it again, and I like fucking a tear runs down my face. I like, think oh, we God. we all do that. It's like you see the piece of candy on the ground, <laughs> and then you see the next piece of candy on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what you've never had gum off the back of like a subway seat before? Come I on. think we all have. <laughs> anyway. 
So yeah, as you EJ's heard from our friend, he's got oh, oh, I'm so sorry, EJ, he's got, please. He's got an answer. For oh, don't story. apologize to me. Apologize <laughs> to Zilball, whose answer I've chosen, oh, uh, who says, go to pizza toppings. Okay, then I always take chicken, feta cheese and pineapple. Yes, I like pineapple on my pizza. And you guys already heard my answer. Chicken and pineapple. There we go. We That's got those two stuff. right there. If I was to take a third topping, I probably don't have the option for feta cheese, but feta cheese is dope. So I like that. That's a good answer. I like the feta cheese. I want to try that now. Yeah, I that usually don't get very ex happy birthday, Zilbo. I usually don't get very happy experimental birthday. with my cheeses. Um, yeah, happy birthday, EJ, also. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, happy oh, birthday thanks, EJ. Guys. I'm glad you remembered. Um, uh, but I, I would like to try the feta cheese. That sounds experimental enough where I'd go for it. That's the kind of stuff I like on my burgers, as I mentioned last episode, with, mm -hmm. like the rare Peruvian soybeans. <laughs> Throw that shit at my burger. <laughs> All right, seven uh, minutes later, I think it's time to talk about Love Love. All right, as our friend we, mentioned, we, we have, are talking about... We have about... an Idol Master uh, reference earlier in the episode, but no Love Live talk yet. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've become corrupted. Um, <laughs> no, we are talking about Kawari Asuki. Kawari <laughs> Asuki. Oh, I love him. And I can't promise that I'm not going to like just refer to Kawari as that from now on. Yeah, I um, like it a lot. Already stuck in my head. Uh, I think, <laughs> it's are we just going to upload that as a standalone thing? We might as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The you have to like uh, change the title of the video. It has to actually sound like Kawari Yasuki as opposed to like the actual spelling. <laughs> how, do we, how do we enunciate that? How do we get people to read it as A-O-W-A-R-I space Y-U-H. Yeah. <laughs> in, my in my description yeah. to him, I also like, I, I wrote it down as pronounce however you want. Because yeah. <laughs> because in this thing it was like tell me how to pronounce things and I was like nah dog give him some art we were really we were really hoping he'd say love love live he yeah didn't. we were like oh, in the yeah. beginning I, I mentioned to Luke I was like do we do we tell him that it's love live or love live and then I immediately retracted my statement with no it'll be funnier if he messes this up <laughs> I'm astonished he didn't honestly yeah I gave I gave Mike I gave Mike uh, five out of five stars he's our boy that's yeah. why this man's a professional yeah put that in our in our Christian mom household love live laugh. <laughs> Um, all right, so Kawari Yasuki and Shadowgate to Love. Initial thoughts, gentlemen. Uh, haha, I lied. I'm gonna go first. Um, wow, what a bully. I, fool I fooled you guys. All right, now for Kawari for reasons that I will talk about, and I think EG and I are of the same mindset, but I will only speak for me right now. Um, about half of Kawari sorry, Kawari Yasuki is my favorite thing. About half. Uh, and the other half is like also good, but at the same, like it becomes worse by the fact that it's with my favorite thing. And we'll get there, we'll get there. And uh, as for Shadowgate to Love, a cool song that no one knows what to do with when it's played live. Everyone's just kind of like confused <laughs> looking at each other, like maybe putting their glow stick in the air sometimes, like, eh, 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 eh. Uh, but we'll get to that one too. EJ, how do you like these two songs? Uh, so for the first one, Kawari Yasuki, you know, I'm kind of just sitting here secretly hoping that you guys like take more of the reins on this one. Not because I don't have things gotcha. to say about the song, but because I don't want to have to say the things about the song that I have. Okay, I so you, I'm going to actually, I thought about this today. I have a lot to say about Kawari Yasuki, and the unfortunate thing about this is that there is, ev everything that you don't want to talk about are things that I'm going to say about <laughs> Kawari Yasuki. You guys Yasuki. are bullies. You know See, what? Y'all are bullies. The, you, like, are bu you literally spent the last episode sleeping, I swear to God. You caught me. <laughs> all right, so I think, I think we're all a little bit at fault here. But see, the thing is, you know... I, I am right there with you where there are some parts of the song that I like, some parts that I don't. But the thing is, the parts that I like, I like so much. And the fact that I don't like those other things as much is why it kind of drags it down a little bit for me. But I still have very glowing things to say about the song, so don't worry about that. Me too. Wow, you just took the words completely right out of my mouth. Good, so we're on the same oh. page already. But with Shadowgate to Love, I think we're also on the same page. Uh, but also, I probably like this song a bit more than most people would. This is this is a good one, so I'm pretty excited to talk about that one. So, uh, what about you, Luke? Uh, let me let me let me hit the dab. Uh, earlier in our little group chat, EJ said uh, in in response to Kawari Yasuki, it's like if Smash Ultimate had all the characters you ever loved, all the cool ta tech, and was fast paced, but it also had tripping. I'm like, whoa, no, 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 no. It's like that, except for it didn't have tripping and it had Incineroar in it. Uh, I love this song. Absolutely adore this song. I think in my latest song sorter before Kaseki Karu was two, it was three, so now it'd be four. Adore this bo bad boy. Shout out to Get to Love's pretty dope. Um, I just haven't listened to it as much, and I will gladly let uh, let EJ, t t EJ and Tyler take the throne on that one, but I will protect my, my beautiful baby Kawari Yasuki boy. 
Good, I was hoping that I wouldn't be, like, devil's advocate here. You and me are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> you, sorry, you, you, sorry. You I was hoping that we wouldn't, we wouldn't all be devil's advocate. That's what I meant. Sorry about that. Kawa Kawari Yasuki is my boy, just like Mike. Happy birthday, Mike. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Mike. All right. Hey. All right. We're ready are we ready to dig we, in? Are we ready to dig I'm into so Kawari Yasuki? Yeah, let's, let's, let's dig in, my guys. They're gonna be like this world oh, is imperfect is just... <laughs> <laughs> this this is chorus this chorus is just an anime opening and i will fight to i will fight to my to, to, to my grave over yes this is an anime opening that's what makes it sick all right this is gonna be a sidetrack on anime openings okay all right Sw short sidetrack probably only about five enlighten minutes. me <laughs> like there's there's bad anime openings and there's a lot of those right there's like okay anime openings and there's a lot of those but then there's like really good hype anime openings and i subscribe to that shit right um, and like this one is for me, this is one of those really like, where's my, where's my, I, I would like to see every anime opening in the world, but dubbed over with Kawari, uh, Kawari Yasuki. Um, like I, I, I absolutely love the anime opening vibe from the song and like consistently I have, I know that's like a, like a trademark of like things that I've liked. Uh, we, we've talked about it with a couple other songs in the past. Uh, names are escaping me right now, but I know we have. Touch, touch, um, no Hana. Yeah, there it is. Um, exactly. Like, I, I love my Rocker Girl songs, and I love my anime opening songs, and this, this song, like, is this disgusting blend of both of them, <laughs> and it just does it perfectly for me, and I and I adore the hell out of every part of this song. Fight me, idiots. All right. All right. You want to take the reins on that one? Um, sure, I will. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with anything you just said. I agree. Fought, idiot. All right, well, sit, idiot. All right, moving on to Shadow Gate to Love. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. What I will say though, and I'll—I uh, I know EJ has the same kind of mindset, so I'll, I'll, I will save some for EJ to say. Sorry, EJ, you have to say some bad things too. Damn it. Um, I, what's what's the words I'm looking for here? I I feel like this song. The the biggest problem with this song is that it can't decide if it wants to be the most amazing thing ever, or like kind of generic, like Luke was talking about with the anime opening. Uh, See, I disagree. I disagree. I think that anime opening segment is very good. I is think like it's still, right, so. even if even if you pointed at it and said this is an anime opening like segment of the song, I'm still like, yeah, it's a fucking great anime opening. So segment, the thing though. is about that part, like, I really do like it. I I like it a lot. It's just it's so hard. Imagine baby maybe syndrome, but in a song, like it confined to one song. <laughs> I already think it's weird when songs take two styles and like kind of like mess with them, and I feel like it only works out like not all the time. Oh yeah, it it works out far um, less than it like it, it. There's fewer. There's more times where it doesn't work out than when it does work out. I 100 percent agree. Here's, here's looking at you, uh, uh, baby fucking new world. There it is. Oh, water blue. There's the song. Of that. Yeah, water blue new world. <laughs> Actually, I was just thinking of baby. I baby maybe. Wow, online. actually, this, this this person made Water Blue New World. But anyway, we'll get we'll wow, get there. The lore. Hmm. Um, I just um, there's a lot of times where I and it's it's kind of an unfair thing for the song because I think that both of these parts are are good in their own merit, but the fact that I think one part is about thirty times better than the other part 
just it, it leads to me liking the overall presentation less because it can associ like, associate them not you know in the same song because they're the same song like if these were two songs i would be like all right the chorus song whatever that is is like an 8 out of 10 and then kuadiaski is like a 10 out of 10. you know if kuadiaski had like the style of the intro and like you know the verse throughout the whole song but like i can't shake the parts where it's just i don't know we'll talk about why i think the intro is so amazing when we get there but i just i don't know man i'm not a fan of these two together uh, ej please help me See, out here yeah no i feel i feel oh. both of you here because you know, I've come to realize that it's really just a personal preference thing. If you're the type of person that enjoys anime OPs, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the song. I think it does its job perfectly fine in that regard. It's just that for people like me, uh, like, I don't know if you guys know this, but I am a huge oh. metalhead. Like, it is he hates anime. one of my two favorite genres, maybe number one. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say, but I love all kinds of metal stuff. And I especially love... Are you serious? Yeah, no, I'm serious. I legitimately didn't know this. This is, oh, here we go. Today we learned. Oh, okay, I didn't realize that was a thing, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's a correlation. Gotcha. So, uh, I really like metal music, and I especially love varieties uh, that have a lot of slow, chugging guitars, kind of a sludgy feel to them, and that's exactly what I got out of the intro and to some extent the verses. And so, it's like, I really, really love those parts. And the other parts of the song, like the pre-chorus and the, the chorus, they do their own thing just fine. It's just that it's not satisfying that itch that I have that you can't really find anywhere else in Love Live, right? There's no other song that does yeah, that. There's, so, yeah, there's other songs, so, you're so right, there's other songs where it's like you can point to other metal songs that exist, like Loveless World and, right. you know, like, of course, After School Navigators. But it, when we get down to, like, specific genres, I know this was a big thing with Azalea when we talked about, you know, like, I don't know, Tokimeki and, and things like that, where it's like, it's not just EDM, like, there's there's all kinds of different, like, even just, even further breaking down synth pop, for example. Mm -hmm. And th there's not, like, you can't really find another, like, I don't know, heavy, like, heavy genty song, I guess. Yeah. Like, you don't, you don't get many that. opportunities for this kind of stuff, so when you don't fully capitalize on it, it's just kind of like, you could have had a little bit more, you know what I mean? So, I, so, so, continue. You feel like you've been robbed. In a sense, yeah. I totally get it. Totally understand. And that's what I'm saying. It's totally it's a it. total personal matter here. Like it's it's nothing against the song really. It's just that I wish I could have had what I wanted. You know, I'm being selfish in that way. See, this song feels weird. It's another guilty kiss song that like totally um, does everything I'd ever wanted to do without me ever wanting to listen to it. I'm not a metalhead. I am like very far from a metalhead, gotcha. right? Um, and, and like I can appreciate it, but that doesn't mean I necessarily like it. But this song, I don't, I, I, I can't necessarily tell you. It's probably the drums. I adore the drums in the song a lot, and I think that's what does it for me every time. Like that's all I can really listen to when I'm listening to the, to the, to the metal part, mm -hmm. parts of the song. Mm -hmm. But it's the same way with like um, uh, Guilty Eyes Fever. Like I'm not, I am not an EDM boy, <laughs> but like that song just does it perfectly for me. And I guess uh, TLDR, Guilty Kiss just does every every genre of song that I hate very they well. They have that effect on people. Where's the Guilty Where's the guilty Kiss synth pop song? I think it like <laughs> comes down to, like this group is so perfectly vocally, like it's so perfect vocally. Like I've talked about Azalea wanting to be that, that, that group that I love vocally, but they just, you know, the genre is just so far away from what I want to listen to. Um, but like this, this group has genres that I've reasonably enjoyed, and just their vocals are are, are on, ooh, they are on fleek, if you would. Flashback to 2014. <laughs> um, every every song, and including this song, I think like this is this is one of the best vocal performances we've gotten out of subunit. We point, well, we personally, uh, we point to uh, a couple Chiron songs pretty often, and we we point to like uh, Strawberry Trapper for Yoshiko. But like on, as far as an ensemble cast goes of all three of them, I don't know if there's like very many performances that vocally that are better than this one i don't think there's another love live song in particular where i can like say that out of the given vocalists i think mari is one of the weaker ones not that she yeah, is weak very but that strange. the other two are like out of this goddamn yeah. world and like it's it's that it's that just like with the what you're talking about with the guitar it's that like it's a slow it's not exactly a fast moving song they're down in like these these middle to low ranges almost the entire song except for when all of a sudden they're using their chest voice to get up there and that's my fetish like using your chest voice to like get up into a higher range, which um, uh, Yoshiko uh, yeah, Yoshiko yep. slash Aikion does throughout the song. Like that is that's my fetish. Uh, I want to continue with vocals, but I feel like I can't like continue with the direction I want to go unless I explain why I personally think the intro is so good. Uh, the intro and the verse, uh, at least instrumentally. Like you already mentioned the vocals, how it's like 
you know, in, in songwriting class at my community college that I took for some credit. Shout out to whoever my teacher was. Shout out. Um, happy birthday, well, teacher. Have, hey, happy birthday, teacher. Um, one of, like, the, the most bare bones, like, how to write a chorus is make it more lively and higher than the rest of the song. And it's, it does it. Mm-hmm. It totally does. Yeah, um, yeah. No, it does, yeah. Um, but as far as the verse goes, like, I, 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 I always mention timings on the show uh, because it's, it's my favorite thing to talk about. And I was listening to what song recently? Uh, oh, Cashmere by Led Zeppelin. And I was counting time, and I was like, what the f- actual time is this song? <laughs> uh, and then I looked it up, and it's like every time. It is every time in the song. Like, the drums are, like, always 4-4, four, four, but, like, the guitar is, like, 5-8 like eight or something. I don't know. It's crazy. But um, let's, let's talk about timings real quick. My favorite part about this song is that the drums, or, like, the beat itself is 4-4, four, four, so that's very standard. That's just 1, 2, 3, 4... Um, but the guitar has like this triplet thing going on, right? It's a little pump. It's got like, um, <laughs> it's like, it adds, so it does it four times. Well, it does it three times, but you can tell where it would be the fourth time basically. Right, right. So like the, the beat itself goes for three or four or whatever, but like they both add up to 12, which I think is cool. So it's like the beat is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, all the way to 12. Uh, I see. And then the triplets are. One, two, three. One, two, three. You know, like, it, it adds up to 12. And I think that is actually the coolest thing. How it's, like, both different timings converge into something amazing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so just genius. Like, I know triplets are nothing new. But at the same time, you know, it, it, it works into itself. And, like, despite the fact that they're using two different timings in this song, it just works out flawlessly. And it's something you don't even think about. But when you do think about it, it's like, holy hell, they put, like, they put thought into this. Um... But then going back, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on it because I already know my feelings. But then you just go to like the the chorus, and it's good. It really is. But it's just something in me gets like just it, not only the style change, which I, I gotta say I don't mind as much as EJ, but it still bothers me because I also <laughs> want my 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 doom metal and love life. But um, like it's just I I just think that the chorus is marginally less amazing, um, in the sense that it does cool things, but. I don't know. When you go from like, oh my god, they're matching timings and it sounds cool to it sounds good and there's layered instruments. It kind of like so, it, it kind of just bums me out personally. Just like we just said with Mari with the vocals earlier, how she's like the, the the weakest member of the three, but like still exceptional. I do think the chorus is like worse than the verse, but like it is the most least worse of all time. You know? Okay, yeah, like, I totally get it. <laughs> like I I, st- I still really just like just like I love Watashi Tachi. Um, you know, I, I I totally love that part of the song. I w- you know, having the entire song to be like Kwariaski, to be like that, the the the, the verses would have been like pretty dope. Um, but you know, with what we have, I am exceptionally happy with it. And like I said, it's like my fourth favorite little song. Totally understandable. Yeah, like, I, I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. No. So. Yeah, okay. I mean, I was just gonna add on to something that Tyler was saying, like uh, with the the timing, specifically the chorus versus other places. So another place where you have that really cool timing is in the bridge, like that mathy part where they have oh, the, yeah. the filters oh, on yeah. the voices and stuff. That part's really yeah, cool because cool. I mean you have rhythm layers both with the guitar and the drums, and like you were saying with the guitar, you have note values from like eighths all the way up to thirty seconds, and it's not like you have bars that are just filled with a single note value. They mix it up, so you'll start on an eighth and then go into four thirty seconds and then go into sixteenths and then into eighth note triplets or something like that but even then they'll throw in like some rests here and there to give it some like offbeat syncopated flavor so you might have two of the sixteenths missing so those are now on offbeats or something like that so it gives it this yeah, really yeah like in between when they like you know when they get yeah. you know done with one line and they just hop yeah. into the next one there's like just two it's like two measures of rest for like absolutely no reason it just right. throws the whole timing off which yeah. this sounds bad but that's not what I mean no no yeah it gives it that like stuttery mathy kind of feel which I really really like and it's super creative as far as the rhythm is concerned but then if you compare it to something like the chorus where again this is intentional but it's a matter of preference you have much simpler beats you have just like linear rhythms and then you know start the next set of bars on the crash very basic kind of j-pop j-rock rather kind of stuff and again i mean if that's what you're into that's totally fine but it's i i kind of wish kind of speaking to what luke was saying i don't wish that they had just been super duper like heavy throughout the entire song and 
like every part was maybe like that mathy bridge, but maybe if they had just spread out the creativity that they concentrated in that short section a little bit across other parts of the song, it might have felt a little bit more smooth and balanced for me. I agree. Sure, sure. Actually, uh, something cool about that that you just mentioned, I totally forgot to, to write it down so I wouldn't have talked about it, so thank you. Uh, save me from my own demise after the episode when I remember something. Um, I think we're diving into, I don't know what the word is, but it's the same concept. All right, so we've all passed like fourth grade, right? We've done fractions. Um, uh, <laughs> I go on, do on. Um, we all know that uh, liter- literally the fraction eight over eight, so like, you know, is the same thing as, um, you know, just... Uh, 92,000 over 92,000. It's true, yeah, and it's the same It's you. the same thing you. as 4 Stop. over 4. I, I know what you... Jake, if you're listening, I know they're the same thing. <laughs> um, 8 eighths is, is the same as, as four, 4 fourths, and it's the same thing how 6 eighths is the same thing as 3 fourths, you know? It's just multiplied by 2. Um, the 8 at the bottom is, is dictating how many measures... Or how many... Or how big the measures are, basically. Sorry, I got that mixed up for a second. I don't know. I don't think it happens in the verse because I think that is four four, and it's divided by fours. But as far as the um, the bridge goes, I think the measures are divided by eighths because as soon as it repeats itself, it is on the eighth beat. Like the first four beat and the second four beat are like nothing alike whatsoever. But the the second four beat, you know what I'm trying to say here? Like the next one. Yeah. So I think it's divided by eighths, not eighths, but you know, like eight beats instead of four beats, like it would usually be. And I think that's so cool. We've explored that in Dropout actually. Where um, the chorus like drop out, oh, na 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 na, like Leah's part is technically three fourths because it is the same thing, but the way it's divided makes it six eighths instead of three fourths, and it's the same thing here where yeah. this is eight eighths instead of um, four four, and I think that's really cool. Sorry, you just mentioned the bridge, and I wanted to talk about that real quick. <laughs> Good addition, I appreciate that. All right, before we kind of retire from this song because we're getting pretty long, I want to say my favorite part. Um, the uh, when the keyboard comes in and really the second uh, the second verse the keyboard's there for like the rest of the song it's it's sprinkled very lightly in the first in the first half but it really comes in in the second verse I really appreciate the kind of like gothic feel that it gives to the song yeah. the yes. rest of it um, feels very much so like it, it is Halloween boo we are listening to uh, Kawari Yasuki and uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really love that like total gothic feel that it gives it. It, it really it feels like it fits everything perfectly yeah. whenever it happens. Um, and between that and Yoshiko's just uh, Kawari Yasuki at the end gives me power, my guys. Yeah, and Riko's uh, or you know Rikako's uh, Kawari Monogao at the end, like right after. Yeah, that's that's also good, but like specifically when just Yoshiko has a Kawari Yasuki like in the middle of the chorus uh-huh. like that just gives me that gives me power Kawari Yasuki um, Kawari yeah, Yasuki the whole, the whole song is the the Yohane Shokan part of the <laughs> Strawberry Chapter yeah yeah right uh, I mean I'll take that <laughs> um, yeah no that's um. My, so I think this song it's it's definitely of course more like rock and metal heavy than EDM but I do think that this is a very good showcase of, to a lesser extent, um, guilty. I almost said BB. Guilty Kiss is like EDM side, but I do think that they have a lot of you know like influences from their EDM songs in this song. Yep. Like you mentioned, like the um, the keyboard all the time, and mm-hmm. you know there, there's a lot of synthy boys going on in the background, which I think is really really interesting. And I think it's a cool mix of like not just straight rock like uh, like Strawberry Trapper or not just straight EDM like uh, I don't know Guilty Eyes Fever, for example. Yeah, the song scares me. <laughs> yeah, and they, they kind of lead into it. Like, you know how the chorus has a lot of that synth kind of sound? Um, but the pre-chorus, there's you can think of it in terms of two halves, where um, the first half, it's not actually real drums. You have an electronic drum kit kind of sound, and then a snare roll comes in from real drums for the second yeah, half. So that kind of thing cool. is like a transition as well. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Drums, drums in this song also give me power. You know what doesn't give me power? The, the 18 minutes. You're gonna, uh, you're gonna the, the, die. Uh, quickly, 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 quickly. Uh, Takashi Sa- Takashi Saiki. Who <laughs> also made 20 seconds. You made no Tobira right? dancing stars on Meru Teshi. He's, uh, Adi Fureta Kanashi Mino Hate. Uh, oh, Water shit. Blue New World. Yeah, hot. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. It's not hate, but that's okay. I'm gonna die. Um, I have a note in here. Explain gent. It five is, seconds. It is far too late <laughs> to explain gent. <laughs> oh, uh, five, five seconds. Uh, shout out to Love Dab.
know how at the beginning of the episode we were saying that this is a joyous occasion, like you have all these subscribers and it's everyone's birthday and all that sort of stuff? Well, it's actually even more exciting than we initially mentioned. One, because I love this song and we finally get to talk about it. But two, because I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but when I made my post about this song, that was the time that I actually shouted you guys out when you were oh. just starting out about a year oh, and a half was ago. Was it really? It actually oh. was. Oh, my happy birthday, us. <laughs> happy birthday, us. Happy birthday. So yeah, momentous occasion for sure. This So this song has to have a special place in all three of our hearts. It already does for me. Hopefully it does for you too. Wow, as well. I had no idea. You shouted wow, us, I us like out it when we were just... More. Yeah, you shouted us out when we were butt babies. <laughs> I think it was like the episode two or three, yeah. I'm surprised anybody shouted us out at that point. <laughs> I'm Happy kind, birthday, kind of questioning your judgment here, but that's okay. <laughs> You've uh, formed into the best podcast on the internet. Wow. Oh my goodness, that, he's Happy it. birthday to every other podcast. Right. And we need your credit card number to save okay. the internet. <laughs> Continue. So, I mean, I was just saying how much of a fan of metal music I am. It's not the only type of music that I enjoy. I love me some of this kind of stuff as well. This is legitimately one of my favorite songs in Love Live. I think that the production on this thing is really slick. I think that the vocal performances are great. I think that rhythmically it's also really interesting, which of course you know is a weak spot for me. Um, but like Tyler was saying early on, Maybe not everyone feels that way, you know, if the, the delayed viewing yeah. of the subunit carnival was, was anything to indicate that. Uh, real quick, before we get any further on that, uh, I what, what other songs did we mention? Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Sakura Bye Bye and uh, Yoshiko Solo are the two that stick out to me the most in particular, where I, I feel like in, in this song, this is the third, this is the trifecta, um, where I feel like if the, if you like the genre, then this is your goddamn song. Um, yeah, oh yeah, big feel. And like Sakura Bye Bye is the one that sticks out the most for me because I like the genre a lot. But it's <laughs> like, I can find literally nothing wrong with this song or Yoshiko Solo <laughs> or Sakura Bye Bye. It is like quite literally what I've come to deem like perfect as far as Love Live quality goes. Uh, not saying yeah. it's like any more or less than other quality, but at the same time, like I think this song is on another level compared to other songs. Like there's of course songs where it's like Mijuku Dreamer, where it's like a catch-all, like it's not a genre, I guess. it's like a ballad, I guess. Snow Halation. Yeah, like that kind of stuff. But like there's certain songs where it's like if you if you partake in the listening of whatever the hell genre this is. I was listening to it in the car. I was like, I put it on and like I eased back into my seat and I'm like, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like it's like, it's like Tokimeki for us for the synth pop boys. Yeah, like, this song is the world's like, largest. Kick down the door, across your arms, and shrug and be like, ah, I just not. I personally just don't like it. Hey man, there there are two Tokimekis now. I don't know if you know about oh PDP. Boy. Oh, oh boy. Tokimeki runners, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, no, run. <laughs> <laughs> no, the song's good. Come on, but yeah, no, I feel like this is one of the um, like you you like it and it's your favorite because you like this kind of thing. Just because of the, the the innate quality of this song, basically. Sure. How do you feel, Luke? Uh, I think the song's uh, exactly how I just said about it. Um, I, I I I feel like, just like Tyler said, if this is your if this is your jam, it's your goddamn jam. Me personally, not a huge like, uh, just doesn't do it for me. But mm -hmm. I do I think it's kind of funky. Too. Here, I'll, <laughs> I'll um. <laughs> Uh, when I was playing, I was playing games earlier today, and I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna like put on these two songs, listen to them on loop, and like, you know, that, that's how I'll get my jam in real quick." And I like put on Quarioski, and like after it finished, I was like, "All right, time to put on Shadowgate to Love," and then I just hit play again on Quarioski because like I just didn't want to go searching for like I was like Shadowgate to Love is not worth my time. No, I, that's not what I said. I just like totally forgot. That's to, what you like, thought though. Go, yeah, I was like, I'm just gonna listen to <laughs> Quarioski about twelve times. <laughs> And uh, after after I'm done listening to Koryaski, then I'll go listen to Shadowgate to Live, and then it was time to record. So like, uh, didn't jam out to the song, but like, I think this song is perfectly fine. I think the song is very good if this is what you're looking for. And it's not a like with with, with synth pop. I just never want to listen to it. This song I, I I'm fine listening to, and like it's, a, it's I don't want to call it a sleeper banger, um, but it is a genre banger. Fair. And that's think... a good name for it. Yeah, I think a lot of people share that same sort of sentiment. I don't think there are people, that many people out there anyway, that actually like dislike the song or anything like that. I think most people are just kind of like, yeah, it's fine or it's pretty good. But there aren't too many people, at least from what I've seen, that 
get really hyped about this song, which is understandable. I mean, it's not a song that's intended to be super hype or anything like that. If you compare it to like Kawariyasuki or Kawariyasuki, or you compare it to... <laughs> yeah, the, the two songs. <laughs> <laughs> or you compare it to like some of the other um, more energetic songs that are in similar style. It, it's not like that. I think it's, um, for one, I mean, it's slower. I think the BPM clocks in around like 104 or something like that. So it's a, it's a fairly slow paced song, even though it has like 16ths in there that make it feel faster. Um, but it's, it's something that I enjoy a lot because I'm not always looking necessarily for something just to be super energetic or fast paced. I really like when things have a solid groove to them and Shadowgate has that in spades. Like my, one of my favorite things about this song is just the amount of rhythmic layers to it. That's probably the the defining trait of it in my opinion i don't want to get like all like you must <laughs> your iq must be this high to appreciate this song um <laughs> that's totally not the vibe i'm going for but i feel like with with just like a more like casual love live listener it, it, this might just be a song where it's like yes it is funky and nice as opposed to like digging deep and like realizing why it is so you know it is the way it is in, in terms of like mm -hmm. As opposed to like innate hype, like Daydream Warrior, for example, where it's just like, holy hell, it is, you don't don't have to think about this song, just go listen to it and like dance around, it's great. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to but, unpack with this song, you know? For yeah. the Love Live uh, subreddit's busiest music nerd, uh, this song <laughs> this song is, is exactly what he's always been looking for. <laughs> See, I, I actually kind of like uh, the way that you presented it, like, you... You don't necessarily have to dig deep into some songs in order to appreciate them fully, because they present like all of their ideas just very clearly to the listener, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think Shadowgate is the deepest song around. I think a lot of the the things it's trying to do are relatively clear and it's really just a matter of preference. I just happen to like these things. It's not like I'm coming on here and it's like a Daisuke Datura Daijobu where I have to really explain myself like, guys, I promise there's so much going on. But I still think that there's there's quite a bit here that if you don't really care all that much about rhythm like I do, then it's totally understandable you wouldn't appreciate it the same way that i do mm -hmm. and like I, I can totally appreciate the song like i get all the, the interesting things for me personally just having a lot going on that is all very well crafted doesn't make me like a song more it's like what songs make my ears go oh that's nice mm -hmm. gotcha. so so for me personally like 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 we've like we've just said not the biggest fan this song's pretty sick though and i think we should talk about how it's cool instead of um instead of talking about preferences like, sure. we, like we tend to do whenever <laughs> we try to defend ourselves. Right. Um, I want to hit up my favorite part of the song uh, very quickly. Uh, just like in Kawariyasuki, we talked about it. Or sorry, Kawariyasuki. Um, we talked take about, a while to break that habit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked about how the um, they, they really get to explore their lower ranges in this slower song that's more grinding, mm -hmm. that's that's more more grumbling along. I like on this song, you kind of get to see the, the, these top-ins like quite a bit throughout it. And and in a slower song like this, exploring those top-ins can be like pretty fun and interesting. I think Mari's like great in the song. We, 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 we were, when we were listening to it, uh, EJ was just like, yeah, this this is the part where, 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 where Luke, uh, Luke subscribes to the song during, during Yoshiko's solo near the end that's, that's uh -huh. overlaid over the rest of the lyrics. It's just it, it, like, I think I think vocally this song is like really cool, really nice. It really gets to explore those top ranges that, that you know they they get to explore here and there, but it really gets to uh, to stretch them out and, and play with them, uh, and I think that's great. I was I'm trying to uh, I was trying to find something like cool to say about not Icon and Yoshiko this song, and I got to that, a point I was happens. like I was like yeah oh, EJ who was that that was awesome and he was like Yoshiko I was like all right. <laughs> <laughs> it happens when she's singing she is the cool guy. <laughs> Um, one of my favorite parts about this song is where a lot of songs, it, this does it too, like this isn't exempt from it, but a lot of songs in like the second verse or repeat things like, you know, another chorus or maybe like an end, like end of song verse or something, they just add more instruments, which is fine. Um, but while this song does do that, it's more about adding on effects to the instruments that you already have. And I think that's really cool. And I can't think of too many examples where that's also a thing. Where it's like, instead of just being the normal thing, it's it's the thing you listened to before, but now it has a weird flange or effect on it, and it sounds bassier, and that's cool. Yep, I think that's part of what um, why why I get the feeling that the production is so slick in the song. Like if you if you were to break down like any one section, you can hear so many things that are going on that you wouldn't really think about just on a surface level. So I think 
Uh, in terms of just instrumentation, you obviously have lead synth and like electronic drums and bass and things like that. But in addition to that, you have things like hand drums for certain transitional sections. You have wood blocks. You have snare rims. Triangle. You have you have triangles. <laughs> you have like this uh, like a crank kind of percussion instrument. It's called a ratchet. Um, you have record scratches. You have claps. You Wait, where are the yeah. record scratches? Oh, yeah, there are totally lots of that. record scratches in this song. There are a lot of places. I gotta, uh, I gotta re-listen to this. Hold on. <laughs> there's also. Oh no! Uh, oh, wait, no. This, this song is my favorite song now. <laughs> <laughs> but you have all sorts of stuff like that, right? And the way that they're incorporating all of these elements, but they're doing it in a way that they're not all jam-packed at once. They only use a couple of things at a time. So, for example, you'll have, um, I think, triangle plus like plus something else like the crank i think it is yeah triangle plus crank you have in one section and then in another section you might have the xylo plus like that bubble popping synth sound and none of them are too loud or, or too crowded but they all have uh their own distinct flair to them they all add something to the song and they work in conjunction and so i think there's a lot of uh varied sounds that they manage to pack into what still feels like a very streamlined package overall um, I can say from experience, and I know sometimes songs overcrowd themselves by having too much. It's, it's an unfortunate uh, try, trying to do too much and now it sounds messy kind of thing. <laughs> but but from experience, like recording my own music, I found that like just adding more stuff where it's like if I even vaguely half think the thought like this might sound good, it sounds incredible, and I'm sitting behind the monitor like yes, the song grows stronger. <laughs> <laughs> definitely what our boy Kazunore Watanabe who composed every actual song in Love Live forever. <laughs> I, how many times have we mentioned him on the podcast? God, it's been billions. Not enough. Like, actually, alright, Mijuku Dreamer, we talked about him on Soshite Saigo on that small episode where we were just like, he's Yoko Ono when he walks in the studio and he was like, <laughs> I will make art! And like about three-fourths of the time it's really good and then sometimes he makes, you know... He's, I will make art and sometimes it's <laughs> just fucking Yoko Ono <laughs> screaming. Luke retweeted the picture a while ago. He has a picture on his... It's like totally like Hideo Kojima's Twitter where like the guy is like... One one time it's like him in the studio and we're like, wow, great. And the next is just him eating ice cream. He's like, ice cream, like in English. <laughs> um, so we, we determined that the quality of the song is based on the ice cream that he has beforehand. Where it's like... If he has it's a delicious ice, Sunday. Yeah. He walks in with a, with a crisp banana. Uh, a crisp banana. Uh, he walks in and makes Majuka Dreamer. If it yeah. is disgusting mint chocolate chip, he walks in and makes the page song. Yeah. <laughs> One like, day the train what? comes late and the sun melts his ice cream and he's just pissed that day. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, his hands are just covered in ice cream and he's like, I cannot watch Gets it all off. over the keyboard. He, mum <laughs> he mumbles to himself like, you will all feel the pain that I felt. <laughs> Kazunori um, Watanabe is the boy, though, for real. Like, he, he's done a lot of really good songs, and you can hear some of the same things that he's doing in some of those other songs in Shadowgate as well. So, a smaller example would be, I mentioned the hand drums before. It's You can hear them pretty clearly during that uh, the beginning of the second verse where they kind of strip down the instrumentation and Mari is doing that slow solo. You can hear the hand drums there. They do a similar thing in um, Aquarium, which he also worked on. Um, and then in terms of like larger structural kind of things, Majuku Dreamer, you guys have mentioned before, it's very uh, chorus dense, right? Sorry. It has a lot of hooks in it. Same thing with Shadowgate to Love, which makes sense because of the kind of genre we're talking about, right? And this mm -hmm. song, it has two choruses right next to each other towards the end of the song, and the beginning of that second chorus is just modified a bit instrumentally to act as sort of that quasi bridge that staples the two together and it's the uh -huh. same story in majuku dreamer so i like yeah. that kind of stuff yeah me too um uh, i did i did not get this instrument out to not talk about it uh i have here oh, my shaky boy <laughs> oh it's here um let me get my instrument out here it's a fucking box full of dice jesus <laughs> i got my shaky boy as well so now that we have we one make a half, good we, we make a good show around here. Now that we have one <laughs> half of the viewers that we just had, thank you guys for sticking <laughs> around after that. Um, uh, I really like um, it's it's another inst you know instance of girls acting as instruments, which we've have you know had multitudes of across the franchise. But um, I feel like they they get really percussion y when they say uh, shadow gate shadow gate in the shadow background, gate, and it, I get the same kind of vibe I would get if it was like shadow gate shadow gate like with with this thing uh, uh -huh. and I feel like it's used in the same inst instances where someone would use a shaky boy 
Um, and I, I think that's really cool how it's like, the, you know, adding Shadowgate doesn't necessarily like add anything to the lyrics, but it's more of just, you know, right. like, it's, it, it definitely just adds to the overall feel of the song. And instead of using a shaky boy, they opted to use girl instead. So, yeah, you goodbye. you may have just opened up a, a can of worms here because I have a, a similar point that I really enjoy about the oh, song. Oh no, the worms are escaping. Uh, do, do we want to do this? Do we yes, want to crack we open? do. Yeah, okay. we, yeah, we are yeah, this yeah. deep. We, we <laughs> okay. called you on for this song and you, you are going to goddamn review this song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so speaking of uh, the girls being used as instruments, so another area where I think that they do that, at least part of partly like obviously the vocals are an important part here but they also feel kind of percussive during the chorus so if you look at the chorus beat what they're doing there is uh, especially in the first uh, part of the song they have these really short punchy syllables and they're doing them on these off beats so like watashi no kage ga, right like that kind of thing um, and they're doing those really short, punchy kind of syllables that make it feel really percussive, especially because they're coming directly on these off, uh, on these offbeats. Um, and then later on in the song, they also start incorporating some slightly longer, more rounded, curvy kind of syllables. Um, and that starts to introduce this sort of groovy element to it because of the way that it's playing with the other instrumental layers and, and how the beat's playing out. So you have parts of it which feel like this linear thumping kind of beat, and then parts of it which feel like this more loose kind of groovy thing. And it's all because of the vocals, or at least they, they play a big part in that. Yeah. All right. He did it. <laughs> He's done it. And under only, 18 minutes. This is why we brought you on, EJ. I only <laughs> slightly cracked open that can. There's, I haven't even talked about the rest of the rhythm. Well, oh, you no. will get the rest. Of, you will, you will get to talk about the <laughs> remaining worms in the EJ the, lightning round. The, the <laughs> remaining worms right now in the EJ. Right. I got round. one or two, one or oh, two. No, no, Tyler lightning nope. round. This is a, they are two second thoughts. Number no, I, one. I'm saying, I'm saying <laughs> this is the Tyler lightning round. Go. Oh, oh, um. Wow, this is going to be about 10,000 le percent less than informative. Ten, ten, two seconds. <laughs> Do your best. Uh, my note is goddamn Sonic level. Uh, okay. Sounds like a Sonic level. Please back me up, Sonic OST boys. And my favorite thing, I didn't get to fully appreciate it until we were looking at a video where it was the static artwork. Not only have I been sleeping on this song for, or on on this outfit for millennia, um, but I also totally forgot that at some point. Yo asked Mari, hey Mari, would you like a bow tie or a tie for your outfit? And yes. Mari said, <laughs> and Mari said, yes. <laughs> um, and she has both and an open stomach. Help this lady get her dress. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. I agree. Please don't change at all. I think it's pretty fly. Uh, all, right, all right. Now it's time for the EJ lightning round. Uh, Boy, we're gonna I need, give him uh, thirty some, seconds on each song. I'm like Batman. I need some prep time, please. All right, All right we will uh, give you, you ten five seconds. seconds. You have five oh seconds my god! For a clean eighteen, okay? No, uh, this go. is not enough. Wait, am I am I doing both songs or am I doing yeah, one well, song you, at a time? You're about five seconds into the first song. You got thirty seconds each. Am I doing Quarius? Oh god, yes. uh, okay. Yasuki. Okay, so Kawari Yusuke, one thing that I like about the intro, in addition to the things that I've already said, like with the Genty sound, is that it primes you to have this sort of like instrumental explosion with the feedback that starts, that climbs up in terms of volume. And then they obviously really satisfy it with those fat guitar seconds. chords and things like that. But then they also have this cool like antenna interference kind of sound thing, which wow, I think is whoa. from like a, yeah, from like a theremin, if you know that instrument. I, I don't know what else it could be, but I like that a lot. Um, and it then just sounds there... like a really slidey ass synth. I don't know. You know? Alright, yeah. Shadowgate to Love. Tyler, quiet. Oh god. Okay, Shadowgate to Love. Alright, <laughs> I, I, can, I can't even do the rhythm, so I'm just gonna talk about the voices. So, um, Rico, what I like about her voice in this song is that it really utilizes that habit that she has, that uptick at the end of her, her uh, lines. Because at one instance, what she does is she does it relatively soft and it leads into this delicate bubble popping sound, so I think that's a nice touch. And then in another one where she's doing it more forcefully, um, it overlaps with the next bar that comes up. So instead of having that issue where she has that lingering tension at, a, at the end of a line where you feel like it's going to be resolved, instead that lingering tension is just immediately cut off because of the overlapping line, so I think that suits her really well. Um, as right. for Yoshiko, you're, you're done. You're done. You're done. Are you Happy serious? Birthday, I gave you. Oh, I gave you an extra ten seconds and everything. Uh, well, you will never finish. If you did, all uh, right. All right. <laughs> I, I am. I am using my Luke override as half the podcast <laughs> to say, if you feel the need to say anything else, please, by all means. Uh, I just want to. I just want to finish Yoshiko and Mari just to give them their sure. fair shake. Um, so for Yoshiko, one thing that I like about her in this song um, is that I really like when she she goes for this kind of register 
Uh, you know, I mean, I, I like whenever she does any part of her range, but this one in particular is one of my favorites. And one thing that's interesting in this song in particular is that uh, her her short O sounds, those vowel sounds, are really, really clear in this one in comparison to other songs where she uses the same register. And I think part of the reason for that is because the subject matter of this song, she's trying to be like have a little bit more of a mature, sexier take on it, and so she has oh, so good. she has more clarity on those notes as opposed to nasality. So it, it's really cool how she has the ability to just turn it on and off whenever she chooses, as opposed to it just being something that she's stuck doing. Um, and then nasality, for Mari, that's what happens in Mortal Kombat, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh shit. Um, and then for Mari, the thing that I think a lot of people uh, key in on on her performance here is also that sort of mature, sexy sound, especially with that one section I was talking about with the hand drums, that slow uh, second verse intro. And she does it a couple different places in the song where she's going from a really sort of slow start to her vocals and accelerating it up. So you have like, you can almost hear the, the voice crack, like individual vocal chords at the start to give it that sort of breathy, sexy texture. And I think uh, that's a, a really useful uh, sort of trait to have in a song like this where the subject matter, again, uh, can't really be fulfilled in the same way with someone like Rico or Yoshiko. So Mary, Mari is like really, really good at doing that kind of thing. Mary is how our boy would have pronounced Mari. Yes, see, it's lodged deep in my brain now. What have you done to me? <laughs> Um, well, you know, half of me was like, how are we going to have a meaningful discussion around Kwadiaski? And the other half of me was like, invite EJ. Uh, <laughs> you mean shout you out? Happy birthday, EJ. Happy birthday, everybody involved. <laughs> Happy birthday, every viewer. All right, well, uh, EJ, not not time for you to go yet because we have questions. But re <laughs> really appreciate you, you EJ, carrying us the through the song. I feel yes. like this is one one that Luke and I could have gotten through, but to nowhere near the the sheer amount of quality that you would have provided. So thank you so much from from me personally. I hope it helped. I DJ, I don't want you ever did. to come back. Please come back next week. <laughs> All right, let's get to the question. Uh, easy one this week. Easy peasy lemon greasy. Uh, what's y'all's favorite of these three CDs? Uh, Tyler, go ahead, hit that dab. I will hit the Chiron eat. Um, I gotta. I I know a lot of people really like this wave, as in all three subunits, um, and I do too. Um, while none of these songs are necessarily, Sharon eh, mm, might be top ten, Aqua at least, but um, none of these songs kind of like crest the holy hell. I if I don't see this live, I will like break into tears and then die. Kind of like category. You know what I mean? I think that all of these, however, are incredibly exceptional. Um, but as for Chiron, um, Yo is one of my favorite vocalists in the whole group. So hearing her just get to belt out and keep my happy end, and then having a fun song, albeit not my favorite live in um, uh, Kai Gondori. Yeah, that's the name of the song. Um, it's 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 just a, it's a perfect blend for me. Uh, Kwadiaski, I can never listen to without being a little bit disappointed in it, or else it would have been Kwadiaski. So I'm gonna give this one to Chiron. What about you, Luke? Uh, very easy, very easy. Giving it to my guilty men. Um, uh, Kawariyasuki, like I said, uh, oh, sorry, Kawari Yasuki is, um, in my top, like, five, uh, absolutely love that song. Shout out to Love, like I said, not a huge fan of it, but that's fine. Um, it, it, it's, it's a good song. I really love Kin Mary Happy End, and, um, to a lesser extent, Kangan Nori Day, but I think that song's really good, and I'm not gonna repeat how I feel about Azalea, but, like, really easily giving it to the Guilty Kiss one. Uh, really good single, and they've failed, they have... Never it failed fail. to disappoint. <laughs> they have failed. They have failed. <laughs> uh, EJ, what about you? How do you feel? Uh, you know, now I, I wish I could say Azalea because, you know, they're the only ones that haven't been said. But, I mean, as much as I do like that single, I do, uh, I also have to give it to Guilty Kiss because I love Shadowgate to Love. Like, it's one of my favorite songs. And Kwariaski, for as much as I wish it could have been a little bit more catered to my personal tastes, there are still elements of that song that I adore. Like, it would legitimately be even higher than Shadowgate to Love in my eyes if more of the song had that kind of sound. So uh, I'm probably going to overall go with that. But I do, again, like all three of these singles. I think they're really good. Yeah, there's, there's really not a loser here, except for me. Happy birthday, EJ. Happy birthday, EJ! Thanks, guys. So of course a uh, link to EJ's stuff where he posts let me let me if we remember tell it you. this time I wanted to say it about uh 
what were we talking about before? About um, Shadowgate, where it's like, you know, your typical love life fan might just listen to it and then dismiss it because it's like, eh, whatever, it's fine. Um, nothing actually makes me more annoyed in real life. I, I am, this is the roast of the Love Life subreddit. The one thing that got us <laughs> to the level that we're at right now. The roast of the Love Life subreddit, where EJ can post a thing that is the most informative, well thought out, and time consuming thing in the world and have it get 16 upvotes. And then someone <laughs> is like, Daya's titties. And it gets like fucking a I billion. Mean, to be fair. No, I to get it. To be fair. I get it. Daya's just... titties. <laughs> I get. I like. I, <laughs> Luke down, down votes every fucking EJ post. <laughs> yeah, it's we been me all along. I have about 50 ults. We're all upvoting the fucking <laughs> Dias titties. Uh, I'd upvote Dias titties too, but I, I. Listen, man. I know everyone here is already already knows EJ and is already a fan of EJ, but man, that just irks me a little bit. So, I felt that oh, way when I, you posted I, your. I appreciate that on my behalf, but you know, I I understand people are not. It's not something that's geared towards as many people as some other types of posts. I understand it, but I, I do appreciate everybody who reads, who votes, all that sort of stuff. I see every comment, read every time, even if I'm not responding, so thanks to everyone who does that. Yeah, I agree. Like, every time someone asks, like, what our pod... I, I live in fear that I'm going to have to mention my podcast and someone is going to ask what it is. I mean, I've gotten it down to a science. I say it is a music podcast. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, practice same. that at Sand um, Crabs, right? <laughs> yeah, no, at, uh, at, at Barbarian Fishing, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, yeah, the music podcast, the fucking yeah. classic. Um, But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I've just accepted the fact that, like, for for our subscribers, like, you know, the number that we have, and, and, like, this far into our channel, I think we're doing very well for ourselves, given the weird niche that we've chosen. Oh, like, I agree. We, we're so, weird I, niche boys. And you too, like, you know, getting the popularity that you have on the subreddit, just, you know, I feel like for, for the weird-ass demographic that we are going after <laughs> right now, we are both doing very okay for ourselves. So. He's of the and, same pod. Uh, hopping on that, uh, by the way, hey, happy birthday, us, 500 subs, thank you, happy everybody. Birthday. Happy so. birthday, us, and you know what's the big fucking celebration? Alright, real quick, real quick, sidestep. Uh, in the Discord over the next nine weeks, not this upcoming weekend, the episode, the Sunday after this episode, um, but the uh, weeks after, we're going to be rewatching all of the Love Live series, six episodes a week, um, on, on Sunday at, I think we agreed at 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Eastern, um, every Sunday. You can see the schedule in the Discord and announcements. Also, next week, we, 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 we begin. We got we begin the, the movie, movie boys. songs. Oh, boy. Um, we're the doing... movie boys dab. It'd be weird if like we wanted to originally go like album releases because that made sense, and we are for the first one. We're doing um, Angelic Angel and Hello Okusawate. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Hello Hoshi Okusawate. That's another one I say wrong unless I sing. But the yeah, ones, same. the ones after that are uh, are chronological order, so you can look forward to question mark arrow heartbeat after that, despite <laughs> it being and future style. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah, next week we got uh, Angelic Angel and. Hello, and I think Hello. Awesome. Hello. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to go all out. I think it's gonna be a good time. Uh, minus one EJ. Rest in peace. Uh, I man, I gotta say, guys, like the the I've, you know, the podcast is going to. We're going to run out of songs eventually. And I remember always thinking in my mind, like, oh, we're not at the movie songs yet. The movie songs are when we really kind of like, <laughs> you know, get get towards the end. But oh man, it's coming. Oh, it's, no. it's here. Um, we still got a while. We still got a while. Oh no. We do not have a while. Oh, but but hey, we're gonna get like <laughs> ten songs to talk about when Tokimeki Runners comes out. Oh yeah, yeah. Bonus episode for that one. Never. <laughs> we, we, we are alive. We are fucking risen from the ash. I think it's coming out in like November or something. I don't. Is, remember. Did I read that right? I, I, November's I, like I, a week released, away. Yeah, they released a official date, so we might have to cut st stop yeah. midway through these fucking movie songs and and do five <laughs> weeks of, of PDP songs. <laughs> One song a week, you get no more, no less. <laughs> there's ten. There's ten songs to do on that CD. We're gonna have to do two a week, as I ain't doing. I ain't going back to three. All right. Well, EJ, I hope you enjoyed being on this episode, and I hope everyone EJ, else enjoyed. Thanks for coming on. Episode. I'm shaking your hand. I'm shaking. Thanks your for hand. having me. I'm, I'm reaching back into the screen. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Goodbye, everybody. See you guys next See week. See ya. Thank you for watching our music podcast. <laughs> Quote unquote. <laughs> <laughs>